have you ever been amazed by the dazzling tricks performed by snowboarders? This video will help you understand the physics involved in this sport. Two of the main physics concepts involved are velocity and acceleration. Velocity basically refers to the speed in a particular direction, while acceleration refers to the rate of change of velocity. Acceleration, which results from snowboarder changing direction, is called centripetal acceleration. To accelerate and achieve higher speeds, players use a technique called pumping, which involves pumping their legs up and down to go fast and high. Landing on heels edge can cause the snowboarder to skid, resulting in loss of speed due to frictional force. However, landing on toe edge will help the snowboarder to have a carved turn and will help maintain high speed. As such, turns are less affected by friction. Forces also play an important role in snowboarding and some of it can be explained by Newtonian laws. Gravity is the force which pulls snowboarders down the half pipe. At the very same time, they are pushed against the sides of the half pipe by contact forces from the surface of the snow. These forces are resulting from the snowboarder when applying forces onto the snow causes these forces to have a reaction on the snowboarder himself. As Newton's law states that every reaction has an equal but opposite reaction to itself. Players feel as if they are being crushed against the surface due to these forces. Force from the snowboarder is explained by Newton's second law and is connected directly to acceleration and mass of the snowboarder. More acceleration means more force. Torque is the force due to rotations by the snowboarder. It will benefit the snowboarder to crouch down in the straight part of the half pipe and on the edge of the half pipe, they can grab the tail of the board to become compact. This would decrease the body's radius. And since angular momentum is conserved, this means reduced radius would lead to increase in the speed. And this is something which is actually expressed by Kim, who is a very decorated US snowboarder in the following video. To minimize the direct impact of forces, it's also important to understand that snowboarders land on the slope surface instead of flat surface. Landing on flat surface can cause injuries due to large force impact, while landing on slope surface results in the impact of forces to be spread over a longer period of time. The player has kinetic energy due to their motion, and as uh, their height increases, this kinetic energy is converted to potential energy, which is energy due to their elevation. If the snowboarder can travel higher, which means they will have higher potential energy, later this potential energy can be converted to higher kinetic energy. Simultaneously, higher speeds means higher kinetic energy, meaning snowboarder can travel higher and further into the air which also means they can do much more fancy tricks in the air. Undoubtedly, snow plays an important role. As a player moves over snow, it generates kinetic energy that's released as heat, which causes a layer of water to be formed between the board and the surface. This layer is only one micron thick, which is 100 times thinner than a dollar bill. Direct sunlight causes snow to melt which means that athletes compete on wet snow, which is more sticky and hence increases friction, causing the speed to decrease. During the night, temperature can drop 20 degrees, defreezing the snow and turning it into a dense icy surface, which provides less friction. One important component of the sport, which has significantly improved over time, is the half pipe itself. Continuous improvements means that the half pipe have higher walls and have become gentler in the slope. Optimizing the dimensions of the half pipe allows for larger radius, which means a higher curvature. 
resulting from higher walls. This means snow voters can go faster, achieve higher kinetic energy, which in turn means more height, which allows more air time, while the increased curvature makes the impact of contact forces gentler on the snowboarder's body. Snowboarding half pipes are themselves marvels of engineering. Since we have now understood the basic physics concepts, let's share the joy of watching a great snowboarding trick called the triple cork. Triple cork involves three flips, which are horizontal movements, and four rotational movements, which are basically circular movements in just 2.7 seconds of flight, while the player has to apply 300 pounds of force to rotate 600 degrees per second, which is the same amount of rotation as a semi tire moving 15 miles per hour. The following sites were used in creating this video. I would like to thank you again for watching.